Hey guys, welcome to the high ground. My name is Fabio and in the second episode of our rope series we are talking about the clove hitch. The clove hitch has a pretty similar purpose as the figure of eight knot that I showed you in the last video. One of the main differences is that you can adjust the length of the running end of the clove hitch while you have still a tight knot so you don't have to open it to adjust the length of the rope running out of the clove hitch but you can always stay secured to your anchor point. There is another big thing about that knot and in the last video I told you that every knot weakens the rope. Well that is also true for the clove hitch but before it actually comes to a breaking rope the rope will just start sliding through the clove hitch. So you're still up on the full strength of the rope, respectively any strength that you might have uh, due to other knots in the rope, but the clove hitch itself, it will start sliding when you apply too much force onto it, but the rope will not break because of it. There are of course a few specialities to this knot. We will talk about them a little bit later, First, I will show you how to tie this knot in three variants, just depending on the situation you're in. Also make sure to stay until the end of this video. There I will show you how to tie the clove hitch very, very rapidly with just one hand. Now here I have my trusty carabiner and the first variant I'll show you how to tie the knot with your hands already completed and then slide it over something or into something that you can open like a carabiner or a shackle or something like that. It's pretty easy. You take your rope, one hand makes a little loop in one direction, the other hand makes the loop in the different direction. So you have to make sure that on one side the rope is running behind the horizontal rope and on the other side in front of the horizontal rope. And then you just lay these loops on top of each other get the rope into the carabiner and there you are that's it i'll show you that one in detail okay let's see that again you put one loop to one side the other loop to the other side and then you slide them on top of each other and clip it into carabiner now, as I said, you have tied the clove hitch to the carabiner and the big advantage, as I also said, is you can adjust the length of either end of the rope without really opening the knot. So you won't lose any security from that knot while adjusting the length. So what do I mean with that? Basically, let's say we want to have a longer end here. We need just more rope on this side, right? So I will just pull on this side, get me a loop, and then I can pull that one down. But if there is something happening while I have the knot like this, so let's say somebody falls and really falls on that side of the rope, the knot will automatically tighten and you won't have the problem that the rope is running through, like if you would tie a figure of eight and then get it out of the carabiner, retie it and get it back into the carabiner. Now let's go for the second variant. The second variant I'll show you how to tie yourself into something with one hand but it has to be a carabiner or a shackle or something that you can open. So this one doesn't really work with a pole where you want to thread the whole knot on to, uh, over it and then basically uh, be tied to it. You really have to have something to open it. So how does that work? Of course you have to just clip into the carabiner or shackle and then you take the rope from behind, form a little ear and put it into the carabiner. And there you have it. I'll show you that again in detail. You put the rope into the carabiner, you take the back rope, so the one from behind, you have to put a loop into it 
And there you see it's already the same form as if you would do it with two hands and then just click it into the beater. The third variant I'll show you can be used if you don't have a carabiner that opens but a closed loop or you want to thread it around a pole or a bar that is uh, somewhere fixed and ha doesn't have open ends. So you basically have to thread it through or around something. Now, how does it work? Again, you just go through and you come out on the outside of the rope, go over again, and then go through between the two ropes. And there you have it, your clove hitch again. I'll also show you that one in detail. Okay, you thread the rope through and you make sure to be here on the outside of that rope. Go over again and then through those two ropes, just go through the middle and there you have it, clove hitch. Now let's talk about the up and down sides and a few application examples for this knot. So the first application is pretty simple. You want to tie yourself to something. Let's say you have this rope tied to you. May it be with a climbing harness, may it be with a rigorous belt or just around your waist. You arrive on a position where you want to fix yourself to. And you're secured. That is the easiest one and also the most common one, especially when you go climbing, etc. This is a very common knot to use. One of the advantages this, this knot has, the knot will of course tighten itself, but if you have a figure of eight, you need to really break up the knot and then open it. With this knot, regardless how tight it is, you can basically just slide it out of the beaner and it will automatically open itself. Now, let's go a little bit in a but more technical application of that knot. Now let's imagine you want to work on a fixed rope and you want to have this rope fixed in place but also backed up. So we have here two carabiners and those carabiners are just here because I don't have a tree and a belay, right? So you can take anything you might need. Maybe this can be a bolt uh, in a rock face this could be a tree or the other way around. You just want to have one main attachment point and one backup, just in case the main attachment point fails. Now, what I would do in this situation, I'll take the trusty old figure of eight, like this. So if you're not sure how to tie this one, um, check the video description. I'll link to one of my videos and connect the figure of eight knot to this fixed point. And now you can easily go ahead without any tension onto these points and just tie the clove hitch. And you have a main attachment point with a backup. This is specifically not meant to be a built belay for rock climbing. We can talk about that in a different video, how it works in that situation, um, because you want to consider um, other things with that. But if you really need a fixed rope in a, well, in a certain spot and just want to back it up, that would be my way to go. Why would I set up the, the backup like this? Well, as I told you, this knot, the clove hitch, will not break. It could only start to slip, so if you exceed the load that it can take, and that depends a lot on the diameter of the carabiner, the diameter of the rope, etc. But let's say it would exceed the strength, the slipping border of the, of the rope, then the rope would just start going through this carabiner, and while doing that, from the friction, it would lose energy. So that as soon as it gets as far that we can, we actually have a load on that carabiner, the rope is still held, but it's likely that it will not reach its breaking strength because there is so much energy absorbed in this carabiner that there is not enough load to really break the rope on this end. If you wouldn't do that one, 
so let's just assume we wouldn't have this backup then at a certain point the rope would just run through and slide and slide and slide and slide and slide and you're gone so we want to avoid that therefore just clip into the second point as well around the tree etc and there you go another example for doing that is also when you want to set up a fixed rope so with a fixed rope you don't want to be standing here and say okay I have the rope fixed here and let's say the distance here is 10 meters and we have a, a steep slope below us so I just want to make sure that people behind of me can hold on to the rope and don't fall down basically don't slide to their death if you want to have it a little bit more interesting now you could of course go ahead and say yeah I will just put load on that and then I will estimate how much rope I need for a figure of eight or just an overhand and then tie it into that second carabiner. That would work, you could do that. Downside of this is that you will never get actual tension on that rope or it will be very very hard to get tension on that rope because you would have to have it a little bit short and then pull it over and clip it into the carabiner. If you go with the clove hitch, you can just leave a lot of slack. Let me slide this over here and this over here. You can leave a lot of slack, put the clove hitch in there and afterwards just adjust the length, how much you need it. So another very, very uh, yeah, big advantage of that knot, so that you can still adjust it. This is why I use it for fixed ropes as well. One thing that is quite dangerous and I'd like to make you aware of is when you use a sling, right? As I said, the, the nut will not break, the sling or the rope will just pull through. For now, let's just say you have this sling and you want to tie it to the carabiner. So, you can do two things. So, the most common one is just thread it through and then as you did with the rope, just pull a clove hitch. Now, you have the issue that if this sling starts sliding, there is nothing at the end. It's the same as for the rope. It will just run through. But since this is a sling, you have the possibility to protect it by just pulling it into the carabiner and closing it. So this one is tied to the knot and e uh, to the carabiner. And even if the knot would run all the way through, there is no possibility that this one slips. And in the end, you still have the full strength of the sling. The other version is not uh, tying the, the knot with, two str uh, with both, stra both strands of the sling, but just with one, like this. And you just take the one behind and have it fixed like this. This is often used when you build a belay in climbing or you want to equalize two points and need uh, to be very flexible with your sling placements. Okay, and now for the last application that I'd like to show you. Now let's say you have that sling tied to yourself to secure yourself to something. Um, it's possible for that to be in a climbing harness, again in a rigorous belt, we also use that at the fire department. So, and of course you will need a carabiner because otherwise you just have a sling. Now you can of course click yourself into anything that comes up and generally you won't have an issue, but the sling is loose in here and there have been a very, well, a lot of accident actually, when people just grab the carabiner like this, go down and lost the sling. So actual famous climbers died. Um, I think Kurt Albert died like this on a Via Ferrata. So. And you can mitigate that risk by just putting a clove hitch in here. And again, you have the advantage that you can A, adjust the length so that both strands are actually loaded. And B, the 
not itself is not weakening the material when you use the correct material or the well if you use specific material and um, it would just start to slide until there is force on both strands and then you're basically good so this is another in my opinion very valuable thing and i do that with all my slings uh, just to make sure that they never slip out of my carabiner when i want to uh, secure myself to something now i promised you another special way to tie this knot and here we go you see i changed sides so that you can see my right hand from the inside i'm right-handed it's easier for me and again this rope is now tied to me but it could also just be loose you only need a little bit of weight on it so you take the rope like this in your hand go around pull it up and you have your clove hitch that can go pretty quick um, it's a rapid version of tying a clove hitch of course again you need to have something that opens up but uh, especially when you climb it's very useful because generally you don't have too much time when you reach a belay you want to be secured to the mountain as soon as possible and uh, yeah very useful thing i'll show you that one also in detail this one is actually not too easy to show in detail but i'll give my best so stay with me so this one is fixed to me here i have a lot of rope i go over and then i'll just take the one hanging down pull it up and there I have my clove hitch again quick here it is that's it thank you all for watching if you have any questions please put it in the comments we will continue with this not serious for at least two or three other episodes and afterwards we will hopefully be able to go a little bit more outside the weather will hopefully clear up and uh, then we will go into a lot more outdoor stuff if you're interested in further videos please make sure to subscribe to the channel if this video was of any value to you it would be great if you could click the like button and otherwise appreciate that you were here and see you next time